couldn't believe it took me nearly two bloody hours to get that crap off these gearboxes, this transfer case. What a mess about that stuff was. So we're not going to be using that anymore. Well, I'm going to be using it, but I don't know what it was. But my God, it was a bugger to get off. So I've got this all cleaned up now, all this... Uh, this transfer case here, it's, you know, the selector mechanism's fine. I didn't take it to bits and everything's moving. I've cleaned up all the shafts here. They're all done. The, the front cover, I'm not changing the seal because that's really new, so that's no problem. Who's making it? Cotico. There you go, see, no point changing, that's new. Uh, the bearing's good, everything's good, so the, the thing I'm going to do now is give this a bit of a squirt of oil and I, by chance I have a partial gasket set here with some of the, well I think all the bits that I need also I've dug out my assorted o-ring kit which is really handy to have these are in inch, inch sizes so we need a couple of o-rings for the front of this, front of this cover uh, when the cover goes on that's not important right now. What is important is mating these two pieces together. But this time, always lock these up because otherwise they'll come open and the bloody things fly all up. What we're going to do is grease the gaskets. I thought about putting some gasket sealer on, but if it's still not right, um, we might have a trouble if we put sealer on. So we're going to leave it with just grease on the paper, like it's. Uh, suggested in the original Land Rover uh, workshop manual. Possibly because they didn't have anything any better. So we have to remember when we put this on to put this fork in whilst we assemble it. So that goes, goes around here somewhere. Um, if you can remember there's there's a threaded piece so that goes to the side if you, you you'll see what I'm trying to say so we're going to get a gasket and which side are we going to fit it onto onto that side so let me get set up and come back right so I've got my grease grease on paper softens the gasket uh, and it stops it leaking because it's nice to use sealers and things like this, but when it's gasket paper, sometimes it's not really necessary to use fancy stuff. I was going to use some sort of a product like Stag, like we used to use in the old days, but I'm going to refrain from this, like I say, because if it's not right, we will not get it off again. And I'm not going to go through all that trouble of cleaning them up. What a royal pain that was, honestly. There we go. And any grease, excess grease can be sort of easily cleaned off. Right, put that onto the hair. Like that. Right, so we've got onto the hair. Now, um, put that over there. Put the top on the grease. We don't want dirt getting in there because it is kind of expensive. The next thing we're going to do is get our oil can out and give, this, give these bearings a preload with, with some oil. Anything in there, give it a bit of an oiling. We'll do that again once we get things going. Um, so now, I'm going to try and assemble this. Now these are a bit of a bugger to do. Um, you can see it because we've got to line that square up on that these dogs on here. That's better. So we've got to line that bit onto there and this shaft and this shaft at the same time. What a lot of fun that is. So let's give it a pre lube. Make sure there's nothing going to stick. I think it was sealer, honestly, I'm not convinced it was just the sealer. So, let's try and get this into here without losing a finger. Okay, 
this is this must have caused some headaches from the bloody factory putting these things together. Now, to line up that shaft in there. Landed. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Well, oh, of course, the, the very tin I've used to support all my bits and pieces is under the. I've got given a load of uh, these tins, and they're absolutely brilliant because. Uh, And of course, you keep all your bits and pieces in, and some tins are really deep, and some tins are sort of small, you can't get your hand in. These are brilliant, and also, if you want to use them as a parts washing tin, just punch a few holes in the bottom so you don't lose all these small parts. Isn't that interesting? Right, let's see if that's going to. Oh, look at that. Hallelujah. So I'll put all these bolts. Oh, nuts, sorry. Put all these nuts in here, and then we'll come back and have a look. Let's see. Now, with all the nuts in place, we're going to evenly nip this down. What's that bit? I might as well put the the flange on as well. Well, not the flange, but the, uh, the housing. Again, we'll get some grease on this gasket. Soak it in. On, the, on there. Again, inside the oil seal, we'll give it a, a generous lick of grease. Bit more grease around this outside. This is red grease. We use this is a low temperature grease. We use it for wheel bearings. It's good. Use whatever you can. It's not it's not brake grease. A lot of people confuse it with brake grease. Mm -hmm. Cover back on. And again, we'll tighten these nuts down here. Right then, after tightening those up, we can put the flange on. We'll just give that a little wipe some with some very used emery where the seal goes. That will polish that up quite nicely. Yeah, that's a nice finish on there. So. Again, we'll get some grease and on the inside of the spline as well. Because this, if you can remember, was pretty, pretty rusty. And look how nice that slips on there. I had to use a puller to get that off. That's how it should go on. Now, the next thing I'm going to look for is a, a washer for there. Now, have I got any? I'll have to go and have a look. Back in a bit. And the answer is no. It had this in before, which is like a rubber. I can't ever remember them being rubber. Is it silicone? 
Yeah. We'll put it in. Because we haven't got one and in our order. It, we might get one. It's only really to stop uh, stop oil migrating along the shaft. Now we'll tighten this up properly when when the gearbox is assembled. So we won't tighten it up fully yet. Well, you can see that's working kind of nice. The next thing we'll do is we'll find an O-ring so here. Now again, I don't think the O-rings are included in the gasket kit. Um, what's that look like? Too small. Two just right. Look at that. Now, for the life of me, I can't understand why they put a, an O ring here but not on here or here. Crazy. <laughs> I don't know why that was. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery, isn't it? So now I'm going to get the top cover. Oh, the cover anyway. I had that on the stove all morning. I didn't paint the underside. Now, you probably see there's a little O ring that goes in here. So we've got to find one of them. Now it goes onto the shaft and in turn inside that hole. Um, this one looks alright. Get it out. Now, where's that shaft gone? Oh, yeah. We'll make sure it goes over this shaft, which it does. And is it going to go into that hole? I guess so. Yep. Perfect. Now, we're going to generously grease all these shafts up. This is why I was sort of reluctant to use any sealer. Grease them all up. And then, in the cover itself, oh, I missed a bit of paint there. Oh, man. We've got to get well in there with some grease. It's not for lubrication, it's just to stop it rusting. And then we'll put some grease all over here. That's going to be nice. And then that. Go over there and remember to encapsulate that little o ring down there. So, the next thing is to put the bolts in. Now, they were little ones, I believe. They like say be sensible type of ones down, they don't have to be like monster type. Cleared a bit of room, get rid of all these rags. Bin man's been today, so he's filled me bag up, filled me bin up with their old rags again. Right. There we go. How does that feel? That feels gorgeous. Let's see down here. There we go. You see that? Let's turn this one up a bit more, I might get some action. So the next thing is we've got to slide that uh, forward, this fork here, and then using the bolt here, we're going to nip it up. Now I'm just going to put a little light dob of uh, Loctite on there. It doesn't need it because it's on a split. Uh, when you nip it together, that lacked like a spring, but well, it's bloody Land Rover in it, you never know. So we use our uh, brake cleaner, a little dab of uh, Loctite, 
whatever it's called. That should screw in there quite nicely. Uh, the little cork gasket for the top. Cork, why did they use cork to make paper? Because this is pressed steel, it can warp and twist. Again, we'll just put a bit of uh, bit of grease on it. That's tightened down. Make sure there's a nice coating of grease on there, both sides. Yes, yes, yes. Cover on. Little bolts. I think I've said it before. Right, next thing, we put the little uh, detent in here. The detent, if you don't know, in the shaft there was a series of cutouts, and this keeps the shaft in place, it stops it moving around. Spring, we put, I tell you what, we put a bit of grease on that to stop it getting rusty. Now, here's a bit of a, a funny one for us. Is that down? Should be. Is that in its right place? Um, this is the little brass cover that goes on here. Now, I'm not sure if it should have a copper washer on or not. Um, perhaps it might be wise to stop this here and go and have a look and see if it's got a copper washer. Now, say, uh, oh, one of the things I did uh, sort of notice is that if you're familiar with series trucks it's got this lever here, this linkage, it's on a pivot if you can see here there's a there's a hole here and there's a pivot. Now the problem is it's a it's a special bolt that goes in there and uh, it's a funny size, it's a, like a quarter Whitworth bolt with a shoulder on it. And if you just put a regular bolt through here, it's going to move up and down, it's not very nice. And also, um, the shouldered bolt is the same thickness as here, so when you tighten it up, it tightens against the back of the housing, allowing this to move without any washers or anything. But we haven't got that. Um, so I don't know what to do. Um, anyway, let me do this, because we'll, we'll, we'll put this together sort of thing and work out if it's going to work. It, it, it's very difficult really now it's all together without the, the, without the, how do we say, without the main gearbox on to actually test the linkages. But um, we'll manage. I'll tell you something, let me go and see about this copper washer and I'll come back. I went to have a look at the parts book and there wasn't a washer down there so I just nipped it down. Uh, you can see here I've bolted on the main casing and the bell housing principally because it's got the fixtures on for the high and low shift. Now this is going to be pretty difficult to film so I think what we might do is just pick up off the other camera here so you can see what's going on. So now we're in, we're in uh, high range two wheel drive and the front pulley just turns lovely. If we want to put it into four wheel drive we hit this and now it goes perfectly into four-wheel drive. No messing about. So we were right that this, the, the linkages here were all gummed up. Now if we want it out of four-wheel drive, we simply put that back into, revert, re, new, into uh, right back. And that should be out, in, and back into two-wheel drive again. This, to me, is a job done. It only cost a few gaskets, which wasn't too bad. But it was worth having a look at because, like I said, just be careful when you're using sealer. It gets everywhere. You know, so just a bit of grease, that's going to be fine. 
I might just go down to CJP if we can do something about a little pin here but if we've got to do a parts order for one you know that special bolt uh, that is here at the front, oh that's, you can see that better um, then uh, that linkage is going to be really nice so there we go cost a few gaskets and a bit of time, well a lot of time actually just like I said, just be careful when you're using uh, gasket sealer that'll be a lesson see you later